Just a little bit of tinkering around today. I've uh, I had a problem with this motor here. This is the aircon unit. It wasn't turning on. Um, so I took the motor out last night. I gave it a clean. The brushes needed cleaning, which is why the motor itself wouldn't start. So um, I put that in. Wasn't getting any um, voltage when I turned the switch on for the AC. So there's a coil behind the dash that I do not quite know what it belongs to. I don't know if I can see it under here. Ah, I've got the light on. So you see this this coil that's right up there. That is not that is not uh, connected right now, as you can see just here. Um, I've just joined the two cables up here. You see that block just there. So I've connected those up. Uh, there were two leads with the similar connectors. And uh, now it seems to be working. So I don't know what that little block goes to, but all the other 48 volt things seem to be working okay. Um, all the regen and all that. So hopefully it's nothing that's completely required. I have a feeling that all it was was just a solenoid that would switch on um, or a contactor of sorts that would switch on with the 12 volt system which for some reason doesn't seem to be working which I ha which I wonder if that is to do with the controls and the batteries um, because it might be to do with this unit here because originally there was battery monitoring cables and the heater and everything was designed to switch off when you were below 25 uh, state of charge, 25% state of charge. So what I um, so what I reckon is that the contactors weren't engaging to actually provide power to the battery, um, provide power to the um, air conditioner and the heater because of the lack of monitoring cables that go to the original lead acids. So I did originally have it attached to a solenoid, but uh, the solenoid overheated and bust the coil. So I'm just using this for the time being. Um, there's no, it's, just, it's just holding it in place, so there's nothing dangerous about it. It's just a nut on top holding the two points together, which if I don't need to, if I don't need the space, I might leave it because that's a good bracket, good strong bracket to stop it from going anywhere. And that also gives me the option, instead of just joining these two wires together, if I ever want to connect it straight to the main battery again, I can just undo the wire here and screw it back onto the main 48 volt, which will run off all the packs. Now I've changed my auxiliary setup, and I now have my old e-bike batteries that I went with, that I had on the tricycle from last year. So I've got those all connected up and that's giving me my auxiliary power. And the aircon is connected up to those batteries just so that I'm not taking away my main range when I'm driving. I'm only... Oh, I better get back in the car otherwise uh, the... I'll be, I'm losing that air out of the aircon. I mean I'm losing the cold air out of the car. <laughs> but it is taken a bit out of the batteries as you can see. It was 53 volts before. So yeah but I've got I've got 40 amp hours of lithium auxiliary power now rather than just a 10 amp uh, 10 amp hour uh, li uh, lithium polymer battery that was sitting in the back which I think was almost dead because it wasn't holding charge very well so now I've got enough auxiliary power to power the dash power all my lights and everything and also give me my aircon so the way the aircon should be turning on and off once it cools down the car to a certain degree I assume there's a thermostat so I should have enough power to do me for most of my driving so for example I should have enough power for up to seven hours driving and then that would be me resting for the evening anyway and I'm not going to use the aircon all the time only at the peak of day when uh, the summer heat really gets to you but there we go that is everything done for the time being I mean although it looks messy there's no knotted wires there's no coils or anything everything's bolted together properly connected properly so I shouldn't have any problems it's all fused as well so uh, no there should be no burnouts nothing's overheating and um, everything's great 
and uh, what I will do as well is I'll have the auxiliary power set up with my solar power so that I can charge while on the road and I can also charge uh, when I'm standing I can keep the auxiliary done uh, topped up and what I will also have is an extra cable to plug into my main batteries and that will enable me to have uh, trickle charge trickle charge with solar because I won't have enough solar to keep me fully charged now I'm doing my first long-range journey uh, next weekend on the 27th and I'm going to try and video as much as I can and what I will also do is um, I'm, I'm in talks with a guy that I met in Milton Keynes yesterday and he and uh, and he's got a BMW i3 so we were having a nice chat and uh, he's actually a BBC reporter it turns out and uh, and we're going to hopefully make a video and record see how far the G-Wiz goes compared to the BMW i3 in terms of range and based on my original testing I'm pretty sure I could do the whole 145 mile journey straight and he may have to stop for a charge so this will be interesting and I look forward to doing the journey with him so uh, yeah there will be a video update in regards to that but for the time being I have my aircon fixed and I have a bigger auxiliary battery pack 